Good morning, bonjour. I'm here to give uh, the press gallery an update on the national tour I've been on. It's called Save Democracy from Politics. And between the moment when we discovered that uh, we were shut down again by prorogation till when we resume with the speech from the throne October 16th, actually my last of the tour dates is October 17th in Vancouver, uh, we've been getting to all parts of Canada. Uh, we'll be get adding Newfoundland, Labrador, and Saskatchewan before the end of the, of the year, so we get actually to, to more places in Canada. But certainly at this point, having had town hall meetings in Whitehorse and Dawson City, in Fredericton, in Halifax, in, and uh, a casual meet and greet that absolutely got packed with people in Moncton, in Montreal, across Canada, uh, with a tour date still to come in Calgary, in Winnipeg, in Brandon, and in Vancouver, uh, it's very clear that when you open up the doors and say, I'm here to answer your question, a lot of Canadians want to come. And the overall themes of the threat to democracy from hyperpartisanship really resonates with people. So in terms of the kinds of things I'm hearing from Canadians, and I thought I'd share that and then open the floor to questions on generally where we stand midpoint in the prorogation. Uh, Right across Canada, I've been taking a very clear message, and it's this, that it's not really a partisan message. It's not just about Stephen Harper and the way he has perverted Westminster parliamentary democracy by placing the Prime Minister's office in a position of complete control, uh, showing contempt towards Parliament on a daily basis. It's not really about Stephen Harper or the Conservatives. It's been a steady increase in the power of the Prime Minister's office over many decades, and while it has been, I'd say, creeping in its effect on democracy, uh, under Stephen Harper it's been galloping, but without adequate attention to these trends, my concern is that when the inevitable happens and a different party's leader becomes the prime minister, it's unlikely that the damage that's being done will be repaired unless we have a public focus on the need for parliamentary reform. So I've been taking a message of electoral reform, for which the Green Party has set up a new website to engage Canadians in a conversation. For to participate in a discourse au sujet de la vraie démocratie, un débat virtuel dans le site web. So we've wanted to engage people in the discussion about why we need to get rid of first past the post. And I also commend my colleague in the House, Craig Scott, uh, for the New Democratic Party. He's also out on the road pushing one particular form of proportional representation, mixed member proportional, but again, engaging Canadians. And the second piece, which is the one that I think gets less attention, is the need for parliamentary reform. How do we ensure that we have Westminster parliamentary democracy and not what we increasingly have, which is a dictatorship punctuated by elections? How do we ensure that when the next person becomes prime minister and steps into Langevin bloc, uh, they start dismantling the console that sits right now on the prime minister's desk that allows complete control of everything? It's a real temptation for anyone in politics, left, right, or center, liberal, New Democratic Party, or conservative, to retain the power that has become centralized. That's been the trend ever since Pierre Trudeau created something called PMO. It doesn't exist in our Constitution, and it's unaccountable. It sucks up a significant amount of taxpayer resources of $10 million a year, and it has, under Stephen Harper, breached all previous protocols of respect for things like the independence of the professional civil service, respecting the barrier between Privy Council office and the Prime Minister's office that, that staffers at PMO, up until Stephen Harper, never felt entitled to harass and bother civil servants who are found on the Privy Council side, whether they're deputy ministers all the way down to uh, at any rank and file within the civil service. I hear stories of people from PMO harassing muzzling scientists, uh, getting people to suppress information. And this is dangerous in a democracy. How do we get rid of this? Will the next person who enters the Prime Minister's office, will Tom Mulcair or Justin Trudeau say, oh my gosh, I have too much power. This must be dissembled. This, this must be dismantled so that we can restore Westminster parliamentary democracy in which the parliament is supreme and the Prime Minister reports to parliament, not the other way around. In every town hall I hold across Canada, we have a very cathartic exercise in which everyone repeats after me, 
There is no such thing as the Harper government. People are very happy to repeat it. They don't, they don't really know it. And I have to explain, look, I'm a member of Parliament. I'm part of the government of Canada. Everything Stephen Harper is doing tries to deny the reality that Sandwich Gulf Islands has a member of Parliament. When there are federal funding announcements made in my riding, they don't notify me of the fact these are happening. And this is true for every opposition member of Parliament. The previous courtesies of a notification to a member of Parliament that you're coming into their riding, something I still do. But when announcements are made, they bring in a Conservative member of Parliament to come into Saanich Gulf Islands as though Saanich Gulf Islands somehow doesn't have representation. We are all members of Parliament. We are all part of the Government of Canada. We are, in fact, the Government of Canada, and we are Her Majesty's loyal opposition. But that means the loyalty is to Canada, and it is not Stephen Harper's government, any more than this House of Commons is a backdrop for his symbolic iconography. When members of governments from around the world come to Canada, the proper place for their reception and formal reception is at Rideau Hall. This nonsense of red carpets up the stairs to Parliament Hill is never covered as though this is a departure from our Constitution. It, it really does veer to the unconstitutional to have the Prime Minister run red carpets up to the, the, the center foyer of under the Peace Tower to welcome visiting heads of government and heads of state. In the case of Netanyahu's visit, we even brought tanks up to Parliament Hill, shook the windows of the House of Commons while the rest of us were inside doing what we should do as MPs. Stephen Harper, as a member of Parliament, like all the rest of us, should be in the House when we're meeting not holding ceremonial functions in the foyer. The lines are not just blurring between Parliament and the executive powers of the Crown. The notion of having a constitutional monarchy in you know, a Westminster parliamentary democracy, the lines are being erased and we're rapidly moving towards an imperial prime ministership. And it isn't just about this prime minister. It's about democracy. One of the key issues that's raised in every town hall I've held across Canada so far, so I want to make reference to it, is public concern about the Canada-China Investment Treaty. Canadians are very concerned to know uh, how its ratification might take place. They're grateful it hasn't been ratified yet. And the fact that so many Canadians are concerned that it comes up, and again, I've been in very diverse locations. I mean, Dawson City, Yukon, is, will certainly be the farthest northern community that I visit. Uh, and uh, perhaps also perhaps the smallest on the tour, although it, it was the focus of the entire town hall meeting in, on Salt Spring Island. So it's a concern of Canadians. We know the Hoopachesset First Nation will be deciding very soon about going forward on their appeal. There's a massive amount of fundraising taking place, basically crowdsourcing from Canadians. So le message c'est clair, c'est que les citoyens et citoyens du Canada sont vraiment occupés avec la santé de la vraie démocratie au Canada. On doit redonner la démocratie sa place au Canada. Et pour ça, on doit avoir euh, leadership de les citoyens et citoyens. Parce que, sauf que ça, j'ai peur que les autres chefs des autres partis sont con euh, seront contents avec le pouvoir dans le bureau du premier ministre. The ultimate powers collected now in the office of the prime minister are anti-democratic and corrosive to democracy. But they won't be restored. They won't be taken apart as they should be to restore the power of individual MPs to vote according to what their constituents want and not down the party line. They, we won't be able to restore the role of evidence-based decision making nor the principle that Parliament controls the public purse unless we start having a discussion about this well ahead of the next election. So thank you for allowing me to make a brief opening statement. I'm happy to answer any questions you have.